Mein Name ist Silvan Klaudrath. Ich bin quer durch Deutschland gereist, um mich mit den spannendsten Führungspersönlichkeiten auf einen Kaffee zu treffen. Heute bei Culture Coffee, Ida Tin, die CEO von Clue. In the interview with the CEO of Gründerszene, I actually used a quote that I learned when I was working with American companies and it says, you either change people or you change people. So <laughs> meaning you, know, you help people accept or change um, or you fire them. So hmm. how do you know when it's time for either or the other? Hmm. What I've seen is that people something starts going wrong and it's not really because of skills not being there. It is some sort of inner developmental point that they reach and they can't get past it. Either it's too painful or they don't feel this is the right setting or they don't recognize it. There is some inner development that can't progress. And then things become you know, the company keeps growing, keep changing. So if people don't keep growing and changing, at some point it's like, it breaks. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as a culture, you can give people opportunity to work with themselves. We have a learning budget here. You know, we, we do a lot of sort of offsides where people come in and try. We do a lot to really help people grow and learn. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think this distinction between sort of personal growth and professional growth is an illusion. I think it's the same it's thing. It's very connected. And so, but if that doesn't work, usually people, they kind of feel themselves like this is not playing anymore. And then you can kind of gently help them mm -hmm. get to the decision that this is not working for them mm -hmm. or for the company. And so it's really rare that I've had to sort of say, hey, not working anymore. Suddenly. Suddenly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, um, and I think it's fair that you want to give people a chance to improve and grow and learn. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I've, luckily there's very few occasions where it has been sort of a, a hard break. It's usually like a pretty smooth process somehow. And even I think if you have to, am I imagining that if you have to like, lay out people because of something economic where it's really not about them, that you can give enough context to sort of explain it, explain it and take that time it takes to, maybe you can do things to help them, you know, get a new position somewhere else. Like there are many things you can do to. Something that I experienced and also feel strongly about for, for that matter. If people understand why, it's much easier for them to accept even though they don't like it. So, right. I mean, you have to spend the time in explaining that, uh, yeah. otherwise you reap the negative. And another thing is that very often, you know, it's a two-sided problem. Mm -hmm. You know, either you hired the wrong person or you hired the right person, but you actually make them do something different than they were hired for, or you didn't help them grow into the new thing they wanted to do. Or like, I, I think it's really never just the employee that, True. I mean, it's usually actually the company that somehow couldn't make it work. And I think being real honest and be like, Damn it! Like I wish we could have made. I made this mistake and this happened, and I can I can understand you're tired, and you know it's like, mm. yeah. Mm. It's if you if you think that people are just stupid and not like performing, you need to probably take a close look at yourself. <laughs> Get some coaching right there. I think um, so. So speaking about feedback and, and coaching, and we're in the tips and tricks section currently. <laughs> something um, that I had. Very good feedback uh, from uh, my team when I was actually working close to this office at Predict.io, and uh, it was a great, fun team. And you know, I would join, uh, you know, lunches sometimes. Sometimes I wouldn't um, because I was busy uh, somewhere else. And when I, when I would join the lunches, people would use the airtime, um, and you know, that's not supposed to have a negative connotation. But they wanted to speak about mm -hmm. business. They wanted to show what they're doing. So it ended up being a business conversation over lunch. Mm. Um, and actually, I got the feedback from. Um, luckily, from more introvert people in the group that said, mm. well, actually, it's taking away my downtime, so mm. I want to have you know, lunch just for mm. relaxation. So I took that on board. <laughs> I was really grateful for the feedback. We changed it. It worked well. Mm. Did something like this ever occur here or in the previous job that you ever have? You know, this little piece of feedback that you want to share with the audience? 
I think one of the journeys that you go on as a founder or CEO is that in the beginning you do everything, right? You have five people around a table and you do everything. And then you hire people who are specialists and much better at things than you are. Um, and at some point you maybe have a management team who are really much better at operational things. And how do you get out of their way? <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you make sure that they have enough sort of principles or sort of that they can figure out what my stance would be in some decision or like they you kind of pass on the way of thinking or the values or the the navigation basically and then you trust them to go and do what they're good at mm -hmm. and i've definitely gone through that journey where, where my management team have been like this is what we need from you but this other thing you're doing we don't need from you can you just like step aside and that is definitely difficult in the beginning because you feel passionate about like mm -hmm. No, but like, you know, let's go That's to market plan and you, you know, and, but I feel I've, you know, I've made some progress on that. Learning. I'm not, we're going to ask know, around after yeah, that. Yeah, I still have many things to learn, but no, it does, it, it's, it's liberating as well, right? It gives space for other things and it makes you, I think that's part of the scaling journey of how do you, how do you crystallize what is it that I uniquely can give and have to give and what really do I not have to do and other people can do better. So that has been a, a very important piece of feedback. How do I get out of their way? Mm. And identifying the right things to get out of, and we spoke about situational leadership a little bit more, um, a little bit earlier. Distinguishing those things is probably yes, very hard. and being available. That's another mm. thing. There's a very big difference whether you're like gone, gone, mm. or where you're like, okay, we had a conversation. You're good to go, mm. but if you need me, I'm happy. I'm here. Like we can talk. Mm. That's. I think that's really important that you, and one of the things I've been working with is um, how, to, how to stay close to the operational reality, mm -hmm. you know, it's because I can be like, couldn't we also do this other thing? And they're like, no, we could not do another thing. We are like up to here. And you know, and it, be it becomes annoying when they're like, why does she keep asking? Can, they not, can she not see that we are like maxed out? Right. So for me to stay close enough without getting in the way, I think that's a constant challenge. Mm. Little uh, change of scenery. So something else that I really like doing in uh, business reviews and also in coaching engagements, uh, speaking about frameworks for business reviews. One framework that I really like is the stop start continue framework mm -hmm. and very simply you go into a meeting let's say you have a monthly uh, business review and you would speak about stop start continue for yourself um, mm -hmm. you would speak about stop start continue for the business and mm -hmm. then for your counterpart mm -hmm. and what I really like about it it's so um, you can expect how the conversation goes so you sort of know what is going to happen um, so you have a framework to prepare for mentally, even though you don't have mm. to have big notes. And it served me really well. I really like the framework. Do you have a similar framework here or at another company that you use? Yeah, when you say that, two things come to mind. First, I do skip level meetings with like a random group of people without managers where I basically ask like, what's working cool right now? What's not working cool right now? Mm. And that always makes me get a lot of information that otherwise gets lost in translation mm. on the way to me. Um, so that's one thing. And the other thing is, We've been exploring a lot of what does it mean to come from a place of abundance, you know, because as a, I think as a founder and manager, you always have this long list of like, and this we need to look at, and this and this, and we really should get starting with this, and you know, you have this to-do list, which is, you know, never ending. And it can get a little heavy, right? Meetings of like, this problem and that problem, and foo -foo -foo. And so now we start of like, like, what's working really well? And I think it's important because essentially, what is working well is probably what you want to do more of as a company. Mm -hmm. A little bit like play to your strength, right? Mm -hmm. So this, and it just creates a completely different energy. And with that energy that you have in the room, it's like, okay, let's tackle all the other things. <laughs> but it makes a huge difference, a really simple thing, but that has been really powerful for us. I like that. I mean, it's almost like what you do in a retrospective and agile scrum. Right. You start with the things that worked and then you go through things right. that didn't work. Very similar. It's important to reinforce those messages, I think, for sure. Um, something else comes to mind. We recently had an interview with the CEO of the Freenet Group, so a big corporate, I think around four billion in turnover or something. Um, I think he said 4,000 FTE, something like this at least. And I asked myself, you know, how does he learn? How does he stay sharp? Um, and 
he explained to me that he has, actually has this peer group of other people that mm -hmm. run huge corporates and <laughs> you know they just you know probably sit together this is my image now and you know and, and on a retreat or something and they they check themselves so um, they sort of have this informal peer learning group mm. i found that very powerful and I, I like the thought a lot mm -hmm. did you ever have experience with anything like so this? i'll say our investors are really good at, at hosting ceo summits mm -hmm where they bring all these founders and CEOs together and do breakout sessions and all kind of things. And for sure, peer-to-peer -peer learning is super powerful. And it's also a concept trying to work with on the team. Like, how do you, yeah. I mean, first of all, people are always more amazing and have all these super hidden interest skills that you'd never imagine. So when you put people together, they can actually teach each other things. Um, I mean, I think it's important because you want to sort of benchmark things and just like send it to check, but you also need the emotional holding. Like you meet, you know, it, it's a special job to have, you know, like all other jobs are special jobs to have, but you need, you need somewhere to go and be like, how did you like, <laughs> like <laughs> so yeah, I think it's definitely powerful. Ida, thank you so much for having us. It was a real pleasure. So I wish you and the team uh, mm -hmm. all the best. And um, it feels like you're on a good path. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> it was a pleasure. <laughs>